Hey folks, Aaron here in the Bean Sprout shop. I'm down at an end of the shop you don't normally get to um, look at this angle from. This is my big, wide, flat table that I often use for drawing and designing and laying things out. And uh, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm dealing with the fret scale length, how to put these frets in the right spot. And some of you already had lots of questions about it. I already did it, so I'll show you how I did it. Um, and it's my first time doing it this way, so I could have made a mistake. We will see once we tune it up. So... The people I am studying from the 1880s and 90s have the same DNA as us. They are just as clever. They are um, even um, handier and craftier than we are because they don't depend on technology. But the things that they do are, are um, just as precise and beautiful, even though they don't have the computer to help them. So a great example of that is um, laying out the fret scale length. Um, the scale length is basically, you know, you've got this distance from the nut to the bridge, nut to the saddle and then you need to put the frets in the right spot for it to play true. And what sounds good and what doesn't sound good kind of goes back all the way to like Pythagoras and Greek stuff, ancient Greek stuff, where taking a string and dividing it into sections makes for the sweet notes of harmony, and that's how Western music is based upon. And so we're gonna use similar geometry to figure out where to put our frets. Um, nowadays, you can buy uh, fret scale templates that are already made for you. You can also use a calculator. You can use a fret scale calculator on the Stumac website. You can measure with a rule to the thousandths of an inch. That's all well and good. But back in the day to do that kind of work, people would use a tool that you probably have never used before. It's called a divider. I have three different dividers here at this layout bench. They're all really old and really cool things. It basically is like a compass that doesn't have a pencil on it, it's just got points. Um, and what a tradition would be traditionally used for is like, if you've got, um, like if I wanna take a banjo rim and I wanna drill holes around it in an equidistant area, an equidistant fashion, I might make a line on the bench or on a paper and say, okay, that's 16 inches and I wanna have um, 12 holes drilled in there. So I take my line and then I lay out about what I think this should be and then I step out down the line one step at a time and see if my 12 hits to the end of the line. If it's a little too big, if it's a little too small, I adjust my size with the little screw and try again. And I do that until I've divided that 16 inch line, 12 segments equally. And now I don't care what this measurement is. All I care is that it's equal and now the answer is right there. So instead of having to measure where 12 holes go, I just have measured once and can lay it out. And so that also gets used by furniture makers and designers all the time for uh, setting up where drawers go, where dovetails are cut, where nails or fasteners might go, um, and you know, whatever. This sort of geometry to, to solve problems instead of measuring to solve problems is also kind of the basis for, you know, the kind of golden ratio bit of art design and construction, you know. Things that look beautiful and proportional are often in even numbered proportions, they say. Uh, so it's like, you know, two to three, three to five, two to five, that kind of golden spiral stuff. Maybe there's a little bit too much placed on that in modern culture, pop culture, but it's a cool idea anyway. So how do I use dividers, or in this case, a compass, which is just dividers with a, a, a pencil in it, to do this job? Well, I'll show you right here. It's doing something called the rule of 18. Nowadays, I think people have decided that 18 isn't accurate enough. There's some other decimal that happens instead. I'm not going to argue with them. We'll wait and see if my instrument plays in tune. Basically, I have my scale length on a piece of, of cardstock here laid out. And then I did, uh, I figured out what this scale length divided by 18 is. So once I figured out this scale length divided by 18, you can either do math to do that, or you could lay out with your dividers, like I said. I got that, that distance is right here. This is the scale length divided by 18. I take and strike an arc like this. That's my first one. That tells me where the first fret is gonna go. Then I take the point and put it where the first fret's gonna go. And then I reduce the size of my compass or dividers till it touches the line at this section. Cause now the line is like an angle, right? And then I draw that line that's where the second fret goes. Stick this where the second fret goes, reduce it till it touches our line, strike the third fret line, and you go all the way down. Do you see what I mean? So I did that. I also Googled it and did and used the Stumac fret calculator. 
I also did some math. I also used a rule laid out to thousands. I just kind of tried everything. And then um, you could even do this rule of 18 stepping out. You could do it right on your fretboard after you get the, the distances. Um, you know, you could, if you chose to, uh, take any two points, find them on here, use this, strike it, you know, however you wanted to. There's lots of ways to get transfer this to this. But it tells you how um, old time people did clever things using geometry. This little descending segment broken up how I just described is how you can get the right math. So will mine be close enough? We will find out. There are those that will argue it's not accurate enough. When we were looking at the Diage instruments in um, Sean's collection, we noticed that there are several where the same error happened around seven, eight, nine. And he, it looks like he might've made a template and then used that template for multiple instruments and then laid it out multiple instruments and they all are off. You can even see it just by looking with your eye. I can see where I've got a problem up around here. I think for this instrument, it'll be okay. Um, and I'll do better next time. So yeah, rule of 18, old timey. We'll see if it works, but it was cool to think like my ancestors for a moment.